All right, the church bells are ringing, uh, at least here, as I live next to a church. <laughs> welcome to October 1, and welcome to the Product Functional Group Update. Um, I have a lot to share today, but I want to keep it short, so I'm going to get started right away. If I can move to my next slide, there we go. So, recently I sent out a, a product survey, and the reason for that, oh, there are various reasons for that. I got a bunch of feedback from different people, and it gave me the impression that we need to work on our communication within product and other teams. So I figured, well, if I just send a survey, I get a lot of voices from a lot of people and then we can calmly look through that. So that I did, and today I will present you the results and conclusions and actions we took. First off, everything that I will talk about regarding the survey, you can find at this link, handbook, product, and then survey. Um, Everything is summarized there, and every question I didn't don't answer in this presentation, we've answered there, at least most of them, I think the vast majority. So first, quantitative outcomes. There were 64 responses, but 40 from sales. Sales was the primary target group, um, so that is very good to see. And I asked a number of questions, it's, but there, there were four core questions. The first was, what is the best selling feature of GitLab? And most people commented about CI being integrated with SEM, and then directly followed um, having a single application for the entire life cycle, which I guess you could combine together. And there were four people that said, well, just see SEM. And, and then there were a number of other responses, but it was a pretty uniform uh, response. The second one, what feature change are customers most uh, excited about? And interesting here with quite a large majority, security features were uh, mentioned as number one. Second to that, at the shared second place were um, everything related to project management, so issues, portfolio management, and CI. Third, Kubernetes with much less votes, and then almost every other feature was mentioned here as well, which I thought was uh, quite fun. So customers care about all of the things we're building. Um, and then, what are we not working on today that we should be spending more time on, I asked. Uh, and the plurality of people said, we should do more in terms of issues, more to compete with tools like Jira. Um, second, people said more in the core part of GitLab, SEM, code review, HA was a number of time. And again, here almost every other feature was mentioned as well. Um, I'm getting back to this, these answers in a bit. And then I asked like, what should we not be doing? Um, or what are we doing and, and should we be doing? And luckily here, there was no consensus. So there's not, one thing that we're clearly doing wrong, but there were a lot of interesting opinions. So a lot of people said, well, we shouldn't spend time working on things that have a clear established market leader currently. So spend less time on X, where X is like Jira or security tools or anything else. There were a lot of things mentioned here. Um, the interesting thing here is, of course, that's how GitLab started, right? When GitLab started, there were already established competitors, both in SEM and in CI, and, and look at where we are now. So that's what I would say to those people. A few people said we should stop doing more breath, and some people uh, said we should stop adding features to core and starter. Um, and I'm happy to go into detail with the, those things uh, at another time or with those people in particular. But to come to the conclusions and to the most important part, I, what I see is that there's a lack of insight in what we're building. The number one people thing people said about what should we do, be doing more of, that we are not, is issues of project management. But we're investing a lot of time in that. Um, so why, why do people say that? It's because people are not aware of what we're building. Two, a lot of people gave me feedback in between the several different questions is that it's unclear on how we make decisions. And the third is uh, we're not consistently giving feedback. And now I'm going to walk through those three and tell you how I have addressed them, how we are addressing them within product and engineering mostly. So first off, there's a lack of insight in what we're building. The first thing we did is I, we created within the product team separate direction pages for each of the DevOps, each for the category. So each for the DevOps lifecycle stages. So if you go to direction slash manage, direction slash plan, et cetera, you'll find a single page with the vision for that particular part of GitLab. So if you were to go to direction slash plan, you'll find exactly how we are competing with tools like Jira. We also made it, and this is, uh, already for a while, but we keep improving this page. We make it very easy to find which PM is responsible for what. And we keep simplifying this page to make it very transparent and easy. You can find that on our product uh, handbook categories. 
And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do FGUs per product category. So that means that we'll have one for manage, we'll have one for plan, and we'll have one for create so that we don't have overlapping content, but also we actually talk about all of the content rather than me summarizing uh, everything here in one call, for instance, which doesn't make any sense, right? I'm already over time and I haven't even addressed any features in GitLab. So this was the first action of improving the insight in what we're building. Two, it's unclear how we make decisions. This is a very fair point and I get this a lot. And what I used to do is I would address it here in a functional group update and I would give you a vague answer because there is no hard and fast answer that covers the entire product. However, there is a hard and fast answer for what each individual product manager does. And what I asked every product manager to do and they have done so is to actually edit that to their direction page. So if you go to direction slash manage, you'll find their prioritization process. And it will say how Jeremy makes his decision, how he prioritizes things. And that goes for every PM. So for every category, every depth of state, you'll find it there. And then a the third one is that, and this is more an observation that I made. We're not consistent in giving feedback. Um, what I noticed is that some people sent a whole bunch of feedback at once. For instance, they had the top 10 list. But then if I were to go into the top 10 list and do the issues, I, there were no Salesforce links. Some people would tell PMs directly, and that's always fine. Um, but some people would only add a Salesforce link and nothing else and feel un, you know, not, not happy that maybe they added the Salesforce link and there were thousands and thousands of seats for that particular feature and it was not recognized by the product manager. So that's a problem and it's a problem that goes many, many directions. Um, and I think that's something we have to continuously work on. But the first thing is, if you wanna give feedback, you're not sure, or you feel like you're not being heard, immediately contact the product manager or me. Like our number one job is dealing with feedback and making that into something great, right? And building something that our customers want. The second tip is we have to maintain a single source of truth. If you have any feedback and you know where the issue is, throw it in the issue. Um, if you don't know where the issue is, just ping the product manager and they'll point you in the right direction or they'll do it for you. And third is, let's keep it up because we do get a lot of feedback, which I'm very appreciative of and I love to get it in any way, shape or form. So please giving us feedback. Um, don't wait for me to ask you. Don't wait for another survey to come by. Just keep giving feedback. And so far it's been amazing. I think this is the one strength of GitLab. Because we're so, so transparent, we can process a lot of feedback and we can do a lot with that. So eight minutes, not, as, not in five minutes, uh, but that's what I wanted to share for today. Let me know if you have any questions. And for the time that there's no questions, I will go through this list. Uh, but you can speak up or add them to chat, whatever you want. No questions at all about any of the product. It can be about anything. It doesn't have to be about this. It can be comment, concern, criticism. I'll walk to my things at least. Oh, Simon says, can you see us getting closer to Microsoft tech-wise? Um, that is a great question. <laughs> it's also a ginormous question because Microsoft is a many billion dollar company. Uh, that buys billion dollar companies. So will we get closer? I think in terms of like our DevOps product versus their DevOps product, I think we're ahead. I think we're ahead in terms of usability. I think we're ahead in terms of features. They do offer a number of very interesting things in particular for Microsoft platforms. Um, do we want to get closer to that? Yes, absolutely. Hey, Job. I think we've lost him. Uh oh. Microsoft. Microsoft question break. Yeah. Took him off. Just to see yeah, that, and then I also give Job some more time there. I see there's Bill. You've got a question about 
PIV and CAC, can you even elaborate what you mean by those? The best time for the power to go out. Oh my. <laughs> Was my last word Microsoft? Because that's just beautifully poetic. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I think um, the question was in terms of part partnership, I suppose. So not are we getting closer in terms of feature parity, but are we going to get closer in terms of building upon Microsoft technologies? Um, yeah, I, I mean, in, in terms of building for their platforms, so at least allowing, for instance, you to run Windows runners, these kind of things. Okay, um, I'm not going to say the M word again because apparently the power in my house will go down if I, if I say so. Um, Simon, the answer is we do want to support the platforms better. Um, it's not something I think we're going to do in the next quarter or so, but in general, it's a huge market. Um, so we do want to be close to Microsoft in that sense. I hope that answers your question because my power went out a number of times while you had, even while you asked it. <laughs> I missed all the other questions from chat because your Zoom chat gets wiped. So if anyone could copy paste them back into the chat, I would much appreciate it. Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, will this be a recurring survey from Joe? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure about the frequency. I, at first I thought I would do it every month. I'm worried that um, it will get stale, that people answer the same questions or stop answering. Uh, but yes, that's my intent. I also hope to streamline it a bit. Uh, and now it took quite some effort. Um, Melissa says, thumbs up to VS Code Plus extension by Fati. Yes, I highly, highly recommend you try that out. Fati made an incredible extension for Visual Studio Code. Um, it's really, really good. And I think it's the best way to today use, if you use an external ID and not GitLab Swift ID. Um, Bill Duncan asks, what is the support for um, PIV, CIC authentication in 11.4? I will defer to that to Jeremy, who I'm sure will leave something in the chat. What other customer information would you find useful to be added to the issue as John Woods? User count, product purchase, growth potential, uh, yes to all of that. Today we can do that without making an issue confidential. That's why Victor started looking into confidential issues. We're also looking into integrating Salesforce more closely or doing something similar. Um, every, all information is useful. Um, just be aware that for now we only have Salesforce links because all issues are public uh, and the trade-off is too painful, right? We can't make issues confidential because then people can't contribute anymore. Um, you can also always just share it directly with the product manager and they should reach out to you as well in a way if they can't access the Salesforce links. John May asks, what do you think of Microsoft's new offering as a competitor? Um, yeah, that's actually interesting. I, so they did rename an existing product. So they had VSTS, which admittedly is a terrible name and Azure DevOps is a much better name. So they renamed it and they reskinned it. So it's essentially a, a rebranding. So it's the same competitor as we had before and they added a few bells and whistles to it, um, which are very interesting. I think there's one thing, one notable thing is that we don't do is they offer runners for Mac and Windows. So uh, you don't have to set up your own. You could do that with GitLab now, set up your own, uh, but we don't offer them out of the box and I even give three minutes for that. That's very powerful. I think that's very great and I, I'm, we're looking into ways to, to compete better with that. 
John Woods, what other, oh, it's the same, uh, same question. That's great. And Lucas says, yeah, we're sad. We don't have Mac OS runners. Uh, yeah, uh, but we do plan to do that. Like we know that there's a, a big market. It's a, it's, a, it's a challenge to do that. Sorry, how are PMs balancing breadth and depth over the next year? Well, I actually added that to my slide here. Um, it's a balance. I think that in 2018, we've been very, very aggressively pursuing breadth. I think that in 2019, um, one thing we're trying to avoid is to a uh, yo-yo, right? We don't want to go breath, depth, breath, depth, and then you get like a TikTok kind of situation. We don't want to do that. I think what we're now learning is we're going balancing a little bit more towards depth, um, whereas before maybe it was 80-20, maybe it will now be 50-50. Don't bring me on those numbers. They are made up. But I, we, I do see in our plans that we are doing a little more, bit more depth, especially for Q4. If I look at uh, what the teams are doing, it's all like stuff that customers really want, depth that customers are looking for. Uh, we're quite, quite laser focused on that. So I'm very proud of that. I'm really looking forward to see like the outcome of Q4. Um, so the last release that we'll be working on will be January 22nd. So yeah, that's, it will be very good to see. I'm, I'm very, very excited about that. Uh, any more questions before my power goes out again? Sorry, why is GitLab 12 March 22nd? Um, so there's a number of reasons. Uh, the, to give you the straight answer, I um, figured we should have a, a major release. <laughs> um, no, the, the reason for, for March 22nd is, uh, one, we want to have major releases frequently enough so that we have opportunities to have major releases where we can deprecate things, where the migration can be a little bit harder. Uh, second reason is it's a great marketing opportunity. So you want to, don't want to have a marketing opportunity in like a vacation. Like we always see a huge drop in user activity around the holidays in December. Um, so you don't want to do it there. And then I don't. I prefer to not go into the um, X point Y and then whereas Y has uh, multiple digits. So 11.10 is not a very beautiful version number because it gets confusing with 11.1. So. March 22nd would mean it would follow 11.8, which gives us a margin of one release if things are on fire. And also March is a reasonably nice time to do a major release like this. Adam Olson asks, another baby? No, <laughs> not, not yet. Um, John Wood says, we do have to be careful because major releases really scare enterprise customers and they require additional testing. Yeah, it's completely fair, John Woods. Um, I, I would say, that's why we are spending, we're doing eight releases that are not um, major releases before doing a major release. But like we have to be able to move quickly. So that's, that's why we do it. And in general, GitLab's major release, especially if you look at like the last two, they've not been very heavy um, upgrades. They've not been very, very hard. And I, I, I don't, well, I won't, I won't make any promises about this one. Sorry, what do your emoji mean under biggest concern? Also, I think emoji plural should be emoji, but the world disagrees with me. Um, so there's my, my major concerns are, the first one is train that's on fire is velocity. Um, I think that's our biggest advantage, that we have a high velocity, we should maintain that. How do we do that? Shipping small, small changes, not putting a lot of weight in our roadmap, um, and just keeping everything going as we've always had. Uh, that's a challenge. The second one is mobile. Mobile is a huge market. It's nowadays bigger than desktop software market. Um, and we're not doing that much yet there. Generally, GitLab is pretty good for mobile and our CI is very flexible. So like it can accommodate perfectly. And there's many customers of ours that have almost only or mostly mobile applications. Um, but we can be more proactive about it. So uh, that's, that's my concern. And our last concern is a little loop uh, and it stands for uh, search. I, we don't have Elasticsearch running on GitLab.com. That's a big concern to me um, because if we don't dog food our things or drink our own champagne, um, that means that we generally are less aware of the good and the bad of it. Uh, and we're not, we don't spend a lot of time. Luckily, Victor spent a lot of time indexing what what needs to be done to get it running on uh, GitLab.com. And it's, it is a work in progress, uh, but it definitely is a concern of mine. And I think our biggest competitor in terms of big SEM player, GitHub, they do search extremely well. Um, so we really need to level up our game there, uh, but it's, it's gonna be 
some hard work in the, in the coming months uh, to achieve that. <laughs> Lucas says, so we could use Victor instead of Elasticsearch if you index everything. That's true, but, but Victor has a very cute little son, so he would only work uh, eight hours a day, uh, five days a week, and then we wouldn't have search hours out of the time. Any other questions? Is this, uh, this is probably a record for amount of power outages during a call. Um, is there any priority in making open source projects more discoverable? Yeah, we're actually doing a whole bunch of things there. Um, I, I'm going to defer to, I don't know if Andreas is on, but I'm sure Jeremy is to share some, some issues about that. But we have some nice uh, epics about that. Adam says, backup generator in your future. Well, I have my internet working on a UPS. So like the internet doesn't go down, but my monitor goes down and my microphone goes down. So that's, that's the problem in my world. So, all right. Um, Simon says, have we got any new plans for picking up community contributions more quickly? I have a call with a customer about this tomorrow. Um, well, I, I think having our community is one of the greatest things about working for GitLab, right? Like it's one of our biggest strengths as well that we have this amazing uh, community. So I believe we measure how long we take with community contribution. We have people dedicated to this. So we are, you know, we fully intend to be as fast as possible. Uh, I don't know about actual concrete things we're doing today that would make a difference uh, compared to yesterday, but I'm, I'm sure that there is something, uh, maybe Eric uh, can comment on this. You might hear baby crying in the background, which is uh, the reality of being a, a dad. And David shared a link to a merge request on gitlab.com, add community contributions to product priority. There we go. That's very good. Thanks, David. Oh, I should have added this to my functional group updates. All right, anything else? I'll give you five seconds to chance. You can also speak up. Did you notice that I added my background? It, I made it GitLab orange. It goes from GitLab orange to white. All right, thanks everybody. See you all in the team call.